Okay, so the first thing that I want to address is the title of this video, Dismissive Avoidance, Care versus Capacity, also applies to dismissive leaning fearful avoidance. The purpose of this video is to shed more understanding for how an avoidant may be coming off in a relationship, why, and what's really going on for them beneath the surface, which is very much not as it may seem. Avoidance are often misunderstood in several different areas of a relationship because one, they can appear stoic. Two, they can have a higher need for certain things than other attachment styles. And three, they aren't always vulnerable and expressive about what they need and what they're feeling. So this video is meant to spread awareness and for partners and loved ones of an avoidant to understand this person in their life better. In no way, shape, or form am I implying by the title that the avoidant is incapable. I, myself, had an avoidant attachment style before I healed. I was at times dismissive leaning and a fearful avoidant at my core. And the truth is, any attachment style can heal and become secure if they want to do the work. So again, this is kind of to put forth more understanding into what's really going on for the avoidant attachment style behind the scenes of a handful of scenarios. Well, if you're new here, my name is Sarah Whaling, and I'm a certified coach specializing in helping people heal and reprogram their attachment style to become securely attached, identify and heal core wounds, heal from narcissistic abuse, and heal everyday pain points. Before I got my certifications, I have the personal experience of healing my own trauma and attachment style, which was fearful avoidant. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one assistance with any of the topics that I discuss in my videos, please visit my website and leave me a detailed message on the contact page. Avoidance, especially dismissive avoidance, can have the core wound, I am misunderstood, pretty far up there on the list of core wounds. And there are good reasons for that. Reason number one, if someone isn't being vulnerable and expressive about what is going on for them, the other person is going to fill in the blanks from their perspective. And as we know, if they're of a different attachment style, they're going to have a different perspective. Reason number two, an avoidant is often not forthcoming with their needs in a relationship because the expression of their needs from another person is not a natural thing for them, and they often feel like they don't have needs from other people. They're generally programmed to think, I meet my needs, and you meet yours, and we come together after separately doing so. They are super independent people, and they're comfortable being so. They also tend to think that people out there mostly think about themselves and are out for themselves. So naturally they're thinking, I have to take care of myself. And they can be thinking, people don't actually care about what I need. They don't really want to hear it. So when those are your beliefs, you're obviously not going to feel encouraged to share your needs, want to even bother, think it's efficient, or sometimes even think that it's a possibility. So on to how this ties into the title of the video, Care Versus Capacity. There are many situations in a relationship that might come up in which an avoidant, for lack of better words, can appear to just not care, but that truthfully isn't the case. It can be that they've just reached their capacity for the situation and they're kind of in freeze mode or shutdown mode. Let's say that you are expressive about your needs in a relationship with an avoidant. Remember, they are likely not doing the same and have very deep-rooted core beliefs that tell them that it's simply not possible and not how things are supposed to be. So naturally, this is going to make relationships feel one-sided. So when thinking about the fact that they feel disempowered to get any needs met from other people, it's going to feel like relationships take, and when that's how you feel, that means relationships can feel draining. All of that setting the tone, this is why they reach their capacity for giving. This is one reason why they automatically feel a little bit at a deficit. So in a situation with an unhealed avoidant, 
This can set the tone for the person asking of them to feel like they're asking for too much. And maybe in reality, sometimes they are, right? Because avoidants are often with their opposite in this way. They're quite often in situations in which they're dating or seeing people who are anxious leaning or anxious preoccupied. And the AP tends to not really feel empowered to meet their own needs. They go to and expect other people to soothe them. They often do not have the skill set of self-soothing to start off with, and that's one thing that they have to learn to become securely attached. So I'm going to cover why, in different scenarios, a different attachment style might question if the avoidant cares and what could really be going on. So if you have an avoidant in your life, you can understand better, and if you are the avoidant, you can be better understood. Let's say that you have a fight with your partner. At a certain point, your avoidant partner falls silent. They retreat. They are stoic. They don't want to talk and or they go off to be with themselves and seemingly take no interest in hashing it out any further and reaching a solution. The first thing that I want to touch base on in this scenario is the avoidant perspective in some situations and what can be a trigger. Now, I am definitely not excusing this. But as all unhealed attachment styles, they have their stuff, and this is one of those things. Unhealed avoidance hate when they feel like you're making your emotions their problem. I'm just going to say it bluntly because that's the best way of explaining how many avoidance can feel in various situations. Now, clearly, you could just be wanting to fix a problem within the relationship, but this is a common avoidant trigger if this is their perception of a situation. For example, maybe they just feel fine and you're triggered by something because something touched a wound. You might witness irritation from them or frustration if they feel that this is a problem that shouldn't be existing or that you're presenting a problem without a solution. Now, this next point is more of a dismissive avoidant thing than a fearful avoidant thing, But dismissive avoidance or very dismissive leaning fearful avoidance do not like conflict. And if it's something someone has harped on many times before, or maybe you've been having a lot of conflict lately, they could be thinking thoughts like, ugh, here we go again. Or they could be thinking that this is more criticism, which is really something that avoidance don't like. It's generally very draining for an avoidant to have a lot of conflict, and one of their greatest needs in relationships is harmony. Chaos is often such a big red flag that it could just make an avoidant rethink the relationship. So since avoidants look at their solo time as their safe space, and for dismissive avoidance, they a lot of the time exclusively self-soothe, they now have a need to go do that to feel okay again. Once they reach this point, they can seemingly shut down. Now, from an outside perspective, it might seem like they don't care what you have to say, and to other attachment styles, it could seem like they don't really care enough to sit there and figure it out, right? Because if they cared, it would be important enough to do. But again, the avoidant in this situation, because of all their stored beliefs about relationships and how they soothe and handle their needs and emotions has reached their capacity at the time for continuing the conflict. Another reason why avoidance reach their capacity for conflict faster is because before an avoidant heals, they're often not actually processing their emotions properly. How to process our emotions, have compassion and inquire about them and truly give ourselves what we need is not something that is taught in school. The unhealthy idea that an avoidant generally starts off with about soothing their emotions usually equates to distracting themselves from their emotions or self-medicating. Distractions or what can turn into addictions are often creature comforts such as food, video games, binging shows, or corn, if you know what I mean. I heard that phrase on here and I laughed my off. And in addition, it could be alcohol or illicit substances. So when a person is not properly addressing their emotions by truly solving for them, they end up emotionally running on empty. 
you can imagine it as an emotional residue that just keeps piling up. So one more thing can feel like a mountain to them. All of these things that are going on with the avoidant put together, the not ever really solving for their emotions, the exclusively self-soothing or what they know to be soothing, the deep-rooted core wounds and beliefs that they have about relationships can also lead them to being at such a deficit that they end up being unwilling to give as much as you want. And this, in no way, shape, or form, means they don't care. It's helpful to keep in mind that different people have different ideas of what a relationship looks like. When we have a mismatch, we can think something is amiss, and we can fill in the blanks from the perception of our wounds. Well, I hope this video has shed some light on what could be going on behind the scenes for your avoidant partner or friend, and I hope that if you are an avoidant, this can help you put some puzzle pieces together as to what could be going on for you. If this video resonated with you in any way, comment below, and if this was helpful to you, please like and share. Take care.